I don't know why I haven't done a video on this guy until now. Got so many sides, don't hide it. If you're looking to improve your range and agility and use compression in an incredible way, studying Sam Ryder is a wonderful place to land. He's got it all. <sighs> and when you know what to listen for and how to listen to it, you begin to appreciate just how incredible of a talent he is. Shaking his fist and really giving it a bit more grit. <laughs> we have the biggest contrast yet. If you would like help putting some of what he does into your own voice and doing it non-judgmentally and non-comparatively, <laughs> click the link below and join my free voice course. And I'll help you work through the challenges of expanding your range, singing with distortion, and creating more interest in your voice in a freeing way. There's a feeling, there's a fire, there's a whisper preaching to the choir. Take the leaders and the lies, throw your fears on the funeral pyre. Keep on breathing, don't go under. Keep your ear to the ground, hear the thunder. When the earthquakes and the ground shakes, throw your caution to the wind when the storm breaks. Mother, sister, father, brother, step in. To the light and start a tiny red. Stop being so goddamn quiet. Got a spark in your heart, so strike it. Wish you we all be turned to pouring rain to a tidal wave and ride it. Got so many sad, don't hide it. Like dynamite, ignite it. Wish you we all be turned to pouring rain to the wave of a tiny red. Oh, if you haven't clenched yet, I don't know when you will. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about here. Let's go back. Right off the bat, we have this sense that he's leaning into different dynamics. You might think this is just a run, but... Uh, He's growing these notes. He's working the mic already, and you can see his face sort of bending the tone. Even though this is a really cool opening, this is the tail end of his warm-up. He's sinking into his comfortable special place so that he can be one with his voice in this experience. There's a feeling, there's a fire, there's a whisper preaching to the choir. Notice the rhythm. He's already moving with it. Rhythm and groove is a priority from the very beginning. Feel it. There's a fire. There's a whisper preaching to the choir. Take the lead and the lies. Throw your fears on the funeral pyre. Keep on breathing. Don't go under. Notice how he uses his hands to illustrate and support the dynamics. It's almost like his hands leave. Da, 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 da. He points, he moves. I've found this to be of great value, especially during live one take performances like this, because it helps you center your mind on what you're doing. Your hands guide you. With singing, your mind follows your body, which then follows your mind, which follows your body. There's this huge connection between your body language and how freely you are able to phonate and express. Let your hands guide you. Fears on the funeral pyre. Keep on breathing, don't go under. Keep your ear to the ground, hear the thunder. When the earthquakes and the ground shakes, throw your caution to the wind when the storm breaks. Mother, sister. <sighs> Mother, sister. Notice how he seamlessly changes resonance, but again, he's got this swell thing going. Mother, sister. Where he grows these resonances. And if you listen to the studio version, he leans in even more, where he's, he's transferring back and forth more obviously between his resonances. Mother, sister. 
Lift this as an exercise. This is a fantastic way to grow your range. As you're ascending, you transfer your registers. You don't try to just go higher and higher and higher in your chest voice, nor do you cop out and permanently switch over to your head voice. If we can go back and forth, we create this sense of, of bounce in our, and freedom in our voice. Look at how his face precludes where he's going intensity-wise. Watch this again. There's this tone crafting that he's doing. He's widening, growing that note, and it's almost like a foregone conclusion that he's going to nail the next note. His body language leads him into that once again. And then listen to this priceless compression he's got on light. Step into Oh, there's just this perfect amount of compression. One other thing here, as he's ascending, he does the resonance flip or register flip one more time. Watch this. Step into the light. Step into. Getting heavy, right? And then right before he's ready to nail that one note and make it really count, he backs off. This is a budgeting thing. This is especially important in one take recordings as well. Step into the light. It would be a lot harder for me to hit light if I had really pegged the. Because even though I've got my support dialed in and I know how to use my voice, I need to make sure that I'm leaving energy for those notes, those money notes, those areas that really count in the arrangement. So backing off on the both sounds good and looks cool, but it's a strategic thing when it comes to budgeting for those huge money notes. Brother, step into the light and start a tiny red. Stop being so goddamn quiet. Got a spark in your heart, so strike it. What should we all be turning apart? So notice how his mouth moves with his runs. It's always funny. You see someone so engaged with their own voice, so free with how they're singing, and someone will point out, oh, no, he's, he's, he's getting his neck too much involved. Is that okay? Is that, is that tension? And my reply to this is, listen, before you look... <laughs> Is he freely using his voice? Yes. There's a huge difference between tension and intensity. He is intense, and as with his hands, he is using body language to guide his voice. Lots of fantastic singers do this. You can see Whitney Houston doing this with her vibrato and with her runs. So don't write this off based on something you heard in something somewhere that says, if you're contorting or moving or you have a lot of intensity, that that's the same thing as tension. Competitive tension kills vocalists. And it's usually born out of striving, not experiencing what your voice is doing in the moment. We'll get into his range here in a little bit, so stay tuned. Take the music, learn to use it. Turn it up to your speakers, blow fuses. Learn the rhythm and never lose it. Keep on moving till you know what the truth is. If butterflies can use their wings to turn the wind to hurricanes <laughs> This kind of line where he's starting in his head voice and floating down This is a Buckley-ish sort of thing 
I love Jeff Buckley, and he was the first vocalist I was exposed to that did stuff like this. It's such a wonderful and relatively easy thing to do with your voice, and it helps you expand your range because you're a, you're going for a note in head voice, which is super easy on your vocal cords, and then you're practicing connecting it using various words and phrases to do so seamlessly. <laughs> A lot of us, when we hear a line like this, go, oh, what an incredible voice, what an incredible agility, what an incredible range. This kind of thing is so easy to do when you're truly experiencing that transfer of, res of resonance between your head voice and your chest voice. Give it a try. Lower it if you have to, but split the difference between your head voice and your chest voice. Practice downward. This is another way that I'm always warming up and instructing a lot of my students to do the same. Start high and heady and get lower and chesty and see how much opens up in your voice very quickly. Butterflies can use their wings to turn the wind to hurricanes. You and I can break the chains. It takes a day to start a tiny rat. Stop being so goddamn quiet. Go back to that high note. Let's just get the notes using his head voice approach. Got something inside, don't hide it. Got something inside, don't hide it. And then get the rhythm. And then listen to how thin his voice is relatively on that high note based on where he is on that sort of consistent note. Okay, if we can think about abandoning to that note rather than pushing to it, and you can see it on his face too. Watch his watch his face. If we can find the weight in that B flat. God, 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 something inside there. I'm having to use my mixed voice to do it. But then if I abandon or throw myself up to the eyed, and I'm going to slow this way down to really focus on the transfer and how I'm throwing up to that note. Got something inside, don't hide it. Got something inside, don't, side don't. That is not this. Got something inside. I'm not trying to take the same weight from that B flat and go all the way up to the other note. I have to thin it. I have to think about how I'm really doing the same thing that, that we were talking about earlier. I'm going to lighten up and initially think head voice. Got something inside down. And then ground back on that lower comfortable note. Got something inside down. Got something inside down, side down. And as I practice sort of ping ponging back and forth between those two notes, I notice the weight, the compression I'm using on that grounding note transferring up without me trying to, to that higher note. If you want to sing high stuff with power, isolating little lines like this and practicing like this is the way to do it. Into a tiny way. Such freedom. In the darkness, there's a light. You can find it if you try. If you open up your eyes, if you're drifting out to sea, you can just hold on to me. Drifting out to sea, sea. Hear how he hit that note so light, I think in head voice, and then uh, 
sighed into a rich chest voice. Another thing to think about here is which came first in a singer performer like this? Was it the great voice and then the freedom or was it the freedom and then the great voice? Lots of people who want to maintain that people just have it and you either can sing or can't will assert that, oh, oh, well, he had a great voice and so he's confident and then, and that's why he's so free. The freedom had to come first. The freedom and non-judgment had to come first. This is what allowed him to discover what he could do with his voice. If he was so uptight, worrying about being good, even as he was learning, his disposition, his body, his mind would not be free enough to allow him to do things that otherwise might feel silly or weird. I love the way on this section, how he's dancing in and out of his head voice in a very, in a lower range than he was previously. If you open up your eyes, oh, if you're drifting out to sea, you can just hold on to me. Just, just, just hold, just hold on to me. In and out of head voice constantly. He's also in and out of nasality. Part of the charm of his voice is that he's not afraid to be nasal. He goes in and out of nasal engagement. It's another thing that supports his fantastic range and agility because he's not locking himself into one tone. He's letting his tone and placement be variable, liquid, and free. And that frees you up to hit notes better. We'll make it to the other side. To the other side, to in head voice, the other. I could very easily sing this to the other side, right? That's not what he's doing. He's finessing, not because he has to use his head voice, but because it's a wonderful tool in his arsenal. We'll make it to the other side. Love that line right there. Oh. Beach in the bar and rain to the wave on a tiny right. Shaking his fist and really giving it a bit more grit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then. <laughs> we have the biggest contrast yet, right? Good God. No. Ooh, yes. But he's going, huh, 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 sigh in that. Good God! Woo. Then put the pitches in. Get the dynamics first. Yeah! Uh, 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 good God! Maybe not that much. Good God! Good God! Woo. Yeah! When was the last time you worked yourself into a free and energetic state to where you could approach two extremes like that back to back? I'm telling you, a lot of this is intuitive for him, but it can be practiced. And the more we practice and learn from people like this, the freer we're going to be with our own voices. I, I, God, ooh, turn the power and rain around and ride it. Some in his side, don't fight it. That's how he's... It's like the tail wagging the dog a little bit. How he lets his body help define his agility. Some in his side, you don't fight it. Turn the power and rain to the wind of a time.
I think it's cool. <laughs> I think yeah. so too. There's a lot of vocal technique we can learn from Sam Ryder, but one of the first places to start is studying his freedom. You start watching him, he's smiling, he's, yeah, I think it's cool, whatever. You see his disposition and you are comfortable because he is comfortable. Learn to find what makes you comfortable as a vocalist and a performer and lean into that. Build from that foundation. If you'd like help doing that, again, click the link below and join my free voice course. We'll see you for more.